Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 13 of the multi-platform series of my Z80 assembly programming tutorials. Today, we're going to be looking at multiplication and division. Now, of course, the Z80 processor has no commands to do this for us, but with some trickery and bit shifts, we can come up with some relatively fast ways of multiplying dividing numbers, and we will need those in certain cases. Now, of course, it does have to be said that if we're doing powers of two, you can do shifting to the right or shifting to the left, to divide and multiply. Uh, every time you shift to the right, you effectively halve a number, and every time you shift to the left, you double it. I'm sure you all know that, but that is the first thing you should be trying to do if you can do so, because that's the fastest way of doubling a number or halving it. But of course, there's going to be times when we need to multiply or divide by other numbers, and today we're going to look at ways of doing that. Now, first of all, let's go over to our code and let's just see the example running, and then we will discuss how it works. So we're in Win8 today. This example runs on Win8 just because it's got a nice debugger so that we can see what is going on. Now, if I do call hexadecimal 8000 here, now, what we are doing here is we've got two examples. Now, the first one, we are going to multiply HL102 by A10. And then the second time, we're going to take 1023 and we're going to divide it by, I've been playing around, we're going to divide it by 10. So we're going to have to compile that again. And we'll run, run again. If I just did call, it's a small 8000 here. Okay, so we're running again there. Now, you can see here, HL contains 102 in hexadecimal, and we've multiplied that by A, which is hexadecimal 10, and so the result is 1020 there. Now, the second example below, just down here, you can see we had 1023 in HL. This time we've divided by hexadecimal 10. The result is 102, you can see in HL, but there was a remainder, and the remainder was 3 there, and you can see that in the accumulator there. Now, if we try some different values, for example, if we try 20 here, and we try 20 here, and we change this to a 4 here, and if we just compile again, and we run again here, we call so this one 8000 here, well, you can see on the top line now, AF was 20, 102 has been multiplied by hexadecimal 20, and we've got 2040 this time, and you can see in the second example, 1024 has been di divided by hexadecimal 20. We've now got a value of 81, and the remainder is 4 there. Now, if I just get my calculator up here, you can just confirm that is right because these things get quite confusing in hexadecimal. So if we do here, and we do 1024, and then we do divided by 20, we can see the result is indeed 81 there. So it looks like our multiplication and division routines are indeed working. Now let's go back over to the theory, because we need to discuss how these are working. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use the dreaded M word here, mathematics. We have to go back to um, sort of the um, first school days or middle school or wherever, and we're going to have to look at long multiplication and long division. Back in the dark ages before phones with calculators built into them, we had to do these things on paper. And what we had to do is you'd put the number and then you'd put the number you were multiplying by or the number you were dividing by, and you'd have to break things down and work it out for every stage. So for example here, you would multiply this one here by 10, and you would store that there, and then you would multiply this two by 10, and you'd have a 20, and then you'd add them together, and you'd end up with 1020. And when you were dividing, it got even worse, and you would basically divide at each stage, and you would store the remainder by the side, and you would build up the number that way. So basically, in this case, you've got this 10 here, divided by 10 will cover one, and then you will have this 20, you would divide that by 10, and you would have a two, and then you would have a remainder three here, and then because we've reached the end of this list, we just put the three there, but if there was other numbers, you would sort of add it along. Now, we don't actually need to know how to do that, but if you want to understand the basics of how today's example is working, you do need to sort of have an understanding of how you do multiplication division sort of part by part of a number system. So what we've got here is the code that we're using for our multiplication and division. Let's go over to our code. We're using these ones here today. And basically what we do is we have HL, which is the value we want to multiply, and A, which is the other value we want to multiply together. A is, of course, 8-bit. Now here what we do is we're moving HL into DE, and then we are just keeping the accumulator as is here. And then what we do is we shift one bit out of the accumulator for each iteration of the loop. The loop is eight because we've got eight bits in the accumulator. Each shift 
what we do then is we effectively m multiply the value in the original HL, which is now in DE, by 2. And any time the bit we push out is a 1, we will effectively add that to the resulting value, which is now being stored in HL. So the original HL is now in DE. We double it each time, and we progressively shift bits out the accumulator. Of course, each bit in the accumulator is worth twice what the previous one was. So bit 0 is worth 1, bit 1 is worth 2, bit 2 is worth 4, bit 4 is worth 8, etc. So as we're going along those bits, if we find one that is 1, the value that it will be worth will be twice what the previous one was worth, and that's why we're doubling the value that we would potentially add here. Now, if we have a look at our example here, we've got a little diagram that I put a lot of work into. So basically, if you imagine this is the accumulator here, and this is DE, well, we're shifting one bit out each time. So the first bit would be 0, and D would be 102, because 102 is our first parameter. We then shift it to the right and DE will be 204, but our HL result is still zero, of course. Now, when we shift along until one of the bits is pushed out into the carry, well, at the point that bit was shifted out, the DE contained 1020, and we would then store that in the result, and we would keep shifting bits. Now, in our example here, there is only one bit that we actually find a match for, but potentially, of course, we could have two matches, and then we would do two additions here. Now. We can just try this out if I go over to here. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to step through the code and we are going to hopefully see this work, but we're going to try a different value this time because we want to try something a bit more adventurous. So let's try 30 this time, hexadecimal 30. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a breakpoint here and we're going to step through the code, hopefully line by line, and we'll see what happens. And basically, we'll see the same thing as I just described. So if I do call 8000 here, I think it's compiles to. OK. So here is our code. We're now running the multiply 8 routine. This is the monitor of WinApe. It's fantastic, and I strongly recommend it for if you're playing around with the basics of, a, of um, Z80 and you want to just try things out quickly. I always use WinApe. Um, that's why we're using it today rather than my other source code, which doesn't have this kind of really, really advanced monitor. So we've got our RRCA here, which is shifting one bit out of the accumulator, and we're going to just monitor that and we'll see what the state of everything is when we get there. OK, so here is the first case. Now, A still equals hexadecimal 30. I apologize, it's quite small, but I will read it out, hexadecimal 30. HL contains 0, and DE contains 102, because we're multiplying 102 by hexadecimal 30. So if we rotate here with this command here, we've shifted a bit out, but the bit is a 0. So basically, we've not done any addition to HL, so HL is still 0, but we're now doubling DE, so DE is now 204. We're running again, shifting another bit. Well, now we've just got another 0, so again, we're not adding anything. We're doubling DE, which is now 408, and we're repeating again. We're shifting another bit out, another 0, doubling again, so DE now contains 8010. We're shifting another bit out, another 0, doubling DE, and it's now 1020. And we're shifting a bit out. This time, we have got a bit 1. So this time, we're going to add DE to HL. So HL now contains 1020, which is effectively multiplying by 10. So we're now doubling DE again, and we're popping another bit out. But this time, we've got another bit 1, because this time it's hexadecimal 30 we're multiplying by, which has two bit 1s. So again, we're adding DE to HL here. And now our result will be complete, because basically the last bit is 0. So that's the last addition we're doing. And then we're returning. And you can see now, HL contains 3060, which is 102 times hexadecimal 30. And that's how that works. So it's bit shifting all the bits of the accumulator and working out using DE the amount to add if that bit happens to be 1 and then the bits that it is 1 it is doing the addition to HL. That's how we're doing that multiplication there. Now division is kind of similar. Um, if you think of your long division on paper, you would, as I say, you would go through each of the top bits and you will 
if you were doing a long division on paper, you would go through each of the digits and you would compare them to the amount you were dividing by. And when you got a match, you would put a result of one. If you didn't get a match, you'd shift that carry on to the next digits until you were complete. Now, we're sort of doing the opposite here. Basically, what we're going to do, if we just go to our example code here, now let's just have a look at the division routine. Here it is. So again, this we're going to be using HL and the accumulator, but this time HL will equal to HL divided by A. Now there is a bit of a limitation with the way this one works. Um, a has to be below, I think it's about a 128. Some values above will work, but they're not reliable. And um, we'll see why in just a moment. Now, basically what we're doing here is we are, first we're checking the a register, if A is zero, division by zero is effectively infinite. Um, it, it always causes an error. So in my example, I return 65535 in the, that case, you might wanna do something else, but I do. Now, now, once we've done that check though, we're then loading the accumulator into C and we're actually zeroing the accumulator. Now we're kind of working backwards with this rather than dividing the large value by the small value, we're basically zeroing the small value and um, increasing it until we get to a match for the amount we were supposed to be dividing by, and then we're altering the large value. That's confusing, but we'll get there in just a moment. What we're basically doing is we are shifting the 16-bit value in HL one bit to the left, and we're doing that by using the add command because it effectively, as I said before, if you double a value, you, you do so by shifting all the bits to the left. Now, when we shift all the bits in HL to the left, if there was a bit at the top, it will get pushed out. It, the carry is affected by this command. And then we're rotating that into the bottom of the accumulator. Now, each iteration of this, we're comparing the accumulator to the value we're supposed to be dividing by. And if we get a value that's, that's higher or the same than the lower value we're dividing by, the value that was in the accumulator, we're then shifting one bit into L to the bottom of HL. And we're then removing that value because that value has effectively been used up from the accumulator and we're doing the same thing again. Now the reason this doesn't work very well for values over 128 is it's actually possible for bits to start getting pushed out of the accumulator before we're greater than the value we're comparing to just depending on the values we're using. So um, if you need to do larger values, it's sort of dividing by 255 or something, you can do the same kind of thing with 16-bit um, numbers if you want rather than using 8-bit numbers. I do have an example code for that, which I'm working on. We've got this version here, which will divide by 16-bit numbers. It's basically the same theory, but we're just using more registers. We're not gonna look at that today, though, for the simple reason I only wrote it this morning, and I'm not sure there's not bugs in it. So um, if if you download the example for today, it will be included, but as I say, I, I still need to do some more testing on it before I'm happy to discuss it as a tutorial. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, we, we're basically waiting for the accumulator to be equal or greater than the value we're dividing by, and then we're shifting a bit in. Now that looks a bit illogical, but basically it has the effect of dividing by the number we want to divide by. So if you look at this example here, this is effectively what is happening to the registers. So in this example, we're dividing 1023 by hexadecimal 10. So we're shifting bits out of HL here in the loop, and all of the bits up until this point are zero, but then this eight gets pushed off the left-hand side of HL, and that, that results in a carry, which goes into the accumulator, and that will shift all along all the way over to here until that eight becomes a one zero in the accumulator, and at that point, we've now got more than the value we were dividing by, or well, matching the value we were dividing by, and so we shift a bit one into HL. We then keep on moving until we get another bit one, at which point we do the same again. We shift another bit in. Now, we're shifting the HL one bit to the left each time as because of that addition of HL to HL and, of course, pushing the bits out the left-hand side. And once we've done a full set of bit shifts, HL will effectively be the value that was in HL divided by the accumulator value because we've basically taken one bit out at a time and pushed it only back in once it's higher than the value we're dividing by and at the end of all of this, the accumulator will contain any remainder. Okay, I know it's all a bit tricky, unfortunately, this kind of 
thing unfortunately is uh, as always you can download these examples from my website so if you don't understand them but you just want to use them that's great um, I'm very glad for you I unfortunately had to read these through until I understood them because I can assure you I didn't originally um, I, I do these tutorials to try and help people learn these things but please don't believe that I'm some great mathematician this this is a struggle for me that's kind of why I do these tutorials it's like if I can figure this stuff out I'm pretty sure you can as well now let's just change this there's a slight I've been messing with my test code here so we need want this to be 1023 and we're going to divide by 10 here so if I now do call hexadecimal 8000 here and we will see what happens okay so the division routine is starting we're checking if a is zero it's not we're then loading the byte value we're dividing by into C we're loading our counter in for, with 16 for 16 bits and then we're zeroing A which is effectively now our build up now what we're doing here is we're adding HO to HL this will double it that's shifted one bit into the carry the carry is currently zero and we're shifting that into the accumulator see so the accumulator is still zero we're then comparing to C which is of course hexadecimal 10 well A is zero so that has no effect we're repeating again shifting another bit out of HO doubling HL again well we've got another bit zero we're so accumulator still zero we're repeating here and we're shifting again here okay so we just got one bit shifted into the accumulator the accumulator is now containing one we're comparing to hexadecimal 10 of course it's lower so we're still not at a stage to do anything we're then doing the same again shifting another bit out of HL and shifting it into the accumulator we got a zero out of HL but we've now doubled the accumulator so the accumulator now contains two well again still lower than C so we're doing the same again but eventually the accumulator has now doubled so many times it's now reached one zero now one zero is the amount we're dividing by so when we compare to C the accumulator is no longer smaller so what we're now doing here is we're inking L this effectively sets the bottom bit of L to 1 and then we're removing the amount we're dividing by from the accumulator now we're dividing by 10 the accumulator is 10 so the result is now 0 and we're repeating it again so we're now shifting another bit out and that's another 0 and we're repeating again got another 0 repeating again we've got a bit 1 there and so we've got the accumulator of one now accumulator now equals two accumulator now equals four accumulator now equals eight and accumulator now equals hexadecimal 11. now this means that we have more than the 10 we're dividing by so we are going to now add another one to the HL setting the bottom bit to one we're now subtracting the amount we're dividing by from the accumulator which leaves a remainder of one we're then repeating again shifting another bit out of HL and into the accumulator the, that gave us another one so the accumulator now equals three that's of course lower than the 10 we're dividing by so we're now just carrying on now we're repeating but we've now run out of loops this was our last iteration so the accumulator now equals three um, and that is effectively our remainder and finally we return and we just show the result and the result of dividing 1023 by hexadecimal 10 is 102 remainder 3 so you can see HL contains the 102 and AF contains the 3 on that second set of lines there so that's what the division does as I say it is possible to use this same kind of formula here for working with larger numbers um, I understand these are quite tricky um, and I fully understand if you don't understand them as I say earlier um, you can have the benefit of just downloading an example um, this is a very common way of doing things that I saw on the internet it's not something I've miraculously thought of myself because I'm simply not that smart but anyway I, I believe this is pretty much the fastest way of doing things as I say unless you're just multiplying by two or dividing by two in which case you just use the general bit shifts anyway that's um, the end of today's lesson if you've liked it please like and subscribe because if you like the videos um, YouTube will recommend them to other people and if you subscribe it encourages me to keep making more videos about things that I don't really understand very well like um, long multiplication and division because I still have very bad memories of doing this when I was about four I didn't enjoy it so um, I don't really particularly enjoy doing it today but anyway um, whatever you do I hope you um, find some use in my tutorials and you have a lot of fun doing them thanks for watching today and goodbye